Okay. What? Oh, I should. I was going to get you. Whenever you get a chance, look at my notice of hmm. deposition when I put it. I think it's good to go the way you. Okay, I'll check it out. I got it scheduled. Oh, awesome! Okay, that's even better. I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it till Friday the twenty third. That was, I mean, with all these vacations. Yeah. With okay. a. Uh, uh, that's a month out. Uh, well, yeah, June twenty third. June twenty third. Nice. All right. Yeah. I so guys, uh, today. Thanks for joining. Today's May twenty fifth. Of course. I don't know why I say that. I don't give the year. I don't know why. I don't know the date, but anyways. So we're going to talk about. I mean, we can we can do a Q and A generally, but I wanted to talk about the idea of trying to figure out what our biometric data is. And so I'm looking around at the industry, data brokers, systems, machines, things are be, that are being used, things that are being used to uh, to collect this data and manage it. How am I getting this other uh, noise in here? All right, sounds good. So anyways, I thought I'd go and uh, pull some articles and we can talk about this. But before we do, I just, if you don't mind, I want to talk about a case um, that took place recently and it's, it's an ongoing saga. And this is just another example of what, what can be done, okay? And <clears throat> so uh, about four or five years ago, I started working with this couple in California and they were being audited by the IRS. And they had done some things offshore and whatnot, they probably should not have. So anyways, I um. They were in the middle of an audit, and um, the IRS gave um, gave these written questions. So of course we we were able to collaborate and answer the questions. And the IRS, of course, did not like the answers, uh, but we did answer them. And is in my opinion, we answered completely. And uh, so the IRS wanted to uh, have an in person audit. So we did the in person audit, um, and we did a transcript of it. So we had a court reporting service come into the room with the IRS agents and the people being audited, and, and to take the transcript. And that took almost all day. I mean, they were complete jerks. The Irish just wanted to, just to push people around, okay? So we got the uh, transcript and I told them, I said, it's likely that the IRS will refer this to the Department of Justice to file a, a case in federal court and accuse you of using the Fifth Amendment and refusing to answer the questions. Sure enough, a couple months later, <laughs> true to form, DOJ files a complaint, you know, and, and lies, and lies, because I told them, do not use the Fifth Amendment. I coached them on this. They did exactly what I told them. They never used the Fifth Amendment, and they never refused to answer. They answered the questions you know, perfectly, in my opinion. You know, They don't agree, but nonetheless, so they were telling the judge, we want to hold these people in contempt for not answering the questions under the, under the audit summons. And so they filed a motion to dismiss saying that the court didn't have jurisdiction because all the questions were answered properly and that the defendants never used the Fifth Amendment. Here's a copy of the transcript, Your Honor. Please read through every page. You'll see that there's no, no claim of Fifth Amendment protection whatsoever. So this was presented in the motion to dismiss. In addition to, we said that the IRS knows, the court knows, and the DOJ should also know that the U.S. Constitution has nothing to do with an IRS audit. So why are you mentioning it? We didn't. So within a month, the IRS withdrew the case. Dismissed. Never said a word. Never said why. No legal memorandum. Just by. Woof. Gone. So that wasn't good enough for them. They had to start a new case. So they found another whatever with the same set of facts. This time it was Financial Crimes Network. You didn't fill out these forms properly. Okay. So now we're in the, the, we're in the middle of this process. And we did some discovery. We were able to go in there and ask them in, in questions and so forth. So they produced 1,300 pages. I think it was 1,300 pages of gobbledygook. And so we just wrote them a letter back and said, eh, this is gobbledygook. You didn't answer any of the questions. And so because of your non-response, we want to take the deposition of the custodian of the records and a deposition of the assessment officer who assessed the taxes that you alleged in the complaint. Simple enough, right? And this is, we're talking about $500,000, $600,000, right? So we went back and forth with the, the, the discovery efforts to try to schedule a deposition. Well, as soon as the DOJ got our deposition notice, it immediately prepared one for the defendants and tried to get them into a deposition first because we gave them an extra two months to prepare. That way they couldn't complain about the calendar, right? But they didn't do that. They just wanted it 20 days from now, which is the minimum. 
So we just filed a protective order the day before. It didn't matter. So we killed that demo. Then they tried it again. They didn't even bother in involving the court. And so our depot was scheduled for May 31st. Didn't even make it that far. The IRS dismissed the case again. And the reason being is they produced a bunch of crap claiming that there was a tax liability. And so we said, okay, fine. We would just want to see the foundation of the tax claim you allege in the complaint. You have to prove it because you alleged it. So where's the assessment? They didn't want to talk about that. And they didn't want to produce the assessment officer. Why is that? Because there isn't one. The whole thing's a scam. So anyways, I just want to share that with y'all. And all we did was uh, use a couple of basic rules of procedure and tell the truth. That's which, monumental. What's that? I said, that's monumental. I mean, that's big. Yeah. If you went to an attorney, you'd be in for chasing your tail for three years, pay $200,000 and still end up, you know, yeah, losing. getting your lunch eaten. So, but I just want to share that with y'all. And just, I guess, as a positive thing that, you know, you, you can, you can beat these creatures and I kind of don't even care. I mean, I don't, I don't really care that we beat them. I just like to talk about the procedure that my expectation was that, I mean, it was either now or later because they're, they're never going to come up with the evidence. But if you just stick to some basic procedure, yeah, they, they have their weakness too. And if you're prepared, that's the thing, prepare. And you can take a court reporter into an audit. Sometimes you should do that. So um, anyways, but with that, um, I just wanted to so, so share with you some articles I just grabbed over the week. And I'm, just look, I'm, I'm looking around the industry about biometric data, the collection of it, who's doing it, what is being used to do it, why are they doing it? So a lot of the collection has to do with using um, your, your phone apps or your interaction with uh, devices and other things, services, and, and creating security for your exclusive access. So like your, your fingerprint, right, makes it unique to yourself when you go to log in. And, and I guess that's justifiable, but then the question is, who's keeping that data and how is it being used? And I think that's what, I, I mean, I think it's being used for nefarious purposes, but check out what, what we're seeing here. Look at, this is what, from Financial Times. How much is your personal data worth? We're trying to figure that out. But look, it's a multi-billion dollar data broker industry. Multi-billion. Okay, so it's approaching $100 billion from what my research so far, all right? Very quickly. And you would think, oh, this is not very interesting. Look at this. Somebody's, you know, biographical data, age, gender, location is, is 50 cents per thousand people. Well, that doesn't sound like it's valuable, right? But you'll see it will be. Um, that collected with other data and the resources that are being put into the ability and means to collect this data is outrageous. So that has to tell you. It's, it's worth a lot more than what you're seeing here. It's not just this 50 cents per thousand people and so forth and so on. It goes on. I mean, look, if we get other things like this, um, people, so yeah, for health conditions, right? The more intimate data, let's say we get on people, the more it's worth, obviously, right? So you guys can see this yourself. I mean, let's see here. Maybe there's a chart with profits. Oh, they won't let me. I got to subscribe or something. But look over here. So look, you got prices on, Prices and value of consumer data. This is back from 2013. It's 10 years ago. I mean, that's then. They're just talking about biographical. But they're not even talking about biometric yet. That's 10 years ago. I mean, we already know that. I mean, look at it this way. I used to um, use Google to generate leads uh, for different uh, things on the internet. And sometimes I would pay $20 just to have a lead. It would cost me $20 to get a person to look at my website. You know, so that type of data can be worth a, a lot of money. Um, let's see here. Here's another one. Here's another one. So here, this is a, um, as you can see, by UNICEF, data for children. Interesting subject. Okay, talking about faces, fingerprints, and feet. They want to identify children. UNICEF. And you can check this out. Just Google it. All right, UNICEF data for children. You'll find this PDF file. It's 39 pages. Look at all this talk about biometrics, especially as it relates to children. I didn't read this yet, but I kind of skimmed over it. I think it's nefarious. I think there's something wrong here. Do we really need to do this? They want to make a foolproof system to track people. 
I mean, they they don't even want to they don't even, they want to make it seamless, so you don't even realize you're being tracked. Uh, tracked. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, this is kind of scary when it has to do with children. I mean, specific risks for children. Hmm. What do you think? <laughs> right. Look, biometric systems. So let's go over here. Okay, so I go to this website, and this moron keeps asking me questions, sales manager. It's not even a human being. Let's get rid of him. But look, who are the key players and companies in the global biometrics market? These are ones you've probably never heard of before. Do you think these look like debtors on your security agreement? Huh? I think so. I think they should go right along with Microsoft and Amazon and Google, and Apple, your DMV. So what's happening is around the country that our lawmakers are decades behind this. The corporations are going to dictate policy, but they don't see this coming. They don't see that people are creating what's called mortgages, okay? Mortgages on their own private property that the companies already have. They didn't realize it, but now they're the debtor. Imagine that. Yeah. They, yeah, they've been, yeah, of course, they've been taking fingerprints and all this, and they just didn't have a system yet. This has been going on for decades, but they didn't have a system yet to use it to someone's advantage. So, yeah, let me put the link real quick. I mean, I could, I could do this here. I'm going to put these links in the chat. You can, it's, look, you can just Google this stuff. Uh, let's see here. There's that. Yeah. Please, if you guys want, find more info and share it with us because uh, we're gonna we're gonna set we're gonna blaze a trail here with this uh, security lien, the security agreement. Uh, here we go: global biometrics market size and share analysis with growth trends. Oof. It's segmented by type: hardware, software, services, biometric type. The iris recognition, hand geometry, facial recognition. This is the mark of the beast. What is the beast? Do you guys know what that is yet? It's the corporations. Mm -hmm. The corporations, they're insane. Okay, that's why they need they're they're creatures without a conscience, right? They need regulations. Well, the corporations have evolved into software. They reach out to us through software. Right now they're about to they're about to strangle us and not let us have access to resources unless we submit. Okay, this is coming. Look at this from look at this chart here. In the next five years, they're projected to, to, to more than double the market size in the collection and management of biometric data. So, do you think you're getting in the ground floor, so to speak? You're claiming rights over property that is undervalued right now. How much is your security agreement going to be worth in 10 years? Private property case law apply to security letter. Yes, it does. If you want us to look at some private property case law, I want you to look at intangible private property. And I want you to look at the concept of privacy and how it's explained as uh, property. And yes, if you can describe it, it can be collateral in a security agreement. Absolutely. You got the right idea. Then they come up with this. I've never heard this before. Compound annual growth rate. All right, whatever. So apparently it's going to make a bunch of money for some people. And here's your here's your equation. Okay, whatever. That scares me. Um, so that's all I got there. I just want to share that with y'all. Is that is that too fast? You want to go back? <laughs> you get the idea though, right? You ask me, hey John, what's it worth? Well, look around. Look at this infrastructure that's being created. You think it has no value? Imagine if a um, thousand of us or a hundred thousand or 10,000 or something got security agreements. Now, if you look in the security agreements I'm doing, I have a little provision in there that says that there's a survivor. I don't know that I have an assignment clause, but the survivor would be, or the assignee would be, and I take your last name and I call it your family trust. Just in case you ever want to assign the, the rights to the security agreement out of or way to the third party, you could do that. Okay, that's your way out. Once you've done that, you can do it again, right? We can always change that. We can make it an LLC, whatever you want. But I'm just thinking, 
what if we consolidate these these agreements and create a pool of funds like the banks do and use it as collateral for something money maybe we set up a corporation in which the share value is based on all the security agreements do you think we'd have some power against all these corporations <laughs> i sure hope something so like that yeah that's a great idea yeah, so there's more we can do with this thing. Uh, let's see if I can get you, uh, you want the last link, Investopedia. Let me see if I can put this in here. If it doesn't work, just kind of- um, the, the links aren't showing up in chat. Are you putting them in chat or in Telegram? Yeah, they're in chat. I don't see any. Interesting. Uh -uh. Do you see it, Ray? No, I don't. Okay. They're, they're not in chat. No. Maybe I just private message somebody. <laughs> yeah the unicef that's a good thing i mean check it out let's see here unicef i mean i think we would have more insight than most people that read this because i don't think it's innocent i'm going to put it here oh let me see if i can um i was i was, I was saying it to i want to send it to everybody I don't know why it's, I don't know how to make it go to everybody. It's not letting me. Everyone. Okay, here we go. I had to switch the thing. All right, so sorry about that. Here's that UNICEF thing. Now, do you guys see it? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Because I just don't know what to do. So anyways, uh, there's that. Uh, oh, and by the way, I forgot to show you this. There, there's an actual calculator. Somebody came with a calculator to figure out your value. It's just a guide, you know, it's, it's nothing official out there yet, but, um, let's go back over there. Hmm. So it can't be found. Oh, let me give you a, give you a different link. Okay. Yeah. That one says can't be found. I'll probably give you one. Oh, wait, here's a bunch of links. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now. This calculator. Oh, here it was. See, I, didn't, I didn't go that far to show you, but I didn't go there. Hey, Jay, I got a quick question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, some years back, uh, they started to change their protocol for international flights, and um, they have a uh, they have a third party contractor, and they're quite aggressive about it. But they get all your biometric data. In uh, you know, when you fly back in from Europe, for example, um, in Atlanta, you have to go through and um, they want they have these machines that take your picture, your face, and then you scan your fingerprints. Yeah, so okay. so that's it's it's pretty intrusive, it's pretty aggressive. Um, they're acting on part for the US government as a contractor like Halliburton, like Lockheed Martin, right? Um, so they think they have all these rights. So, um, yeah. and I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to do some international flying. Um, and I'm curious the best way to, um, you know, to negotiate with them. Well, first I'd refuse, but then I do my same thing. What, what is the legal right? What is your purpose? How will you store it? Where will my data be stored? What is your life? Got it. And get it all in writing. Be like, I need this in writing. I mean, I, I have to find out the responsible people because you can't talk with the morons at the front, you know, but by that time, it's too late. You got to, ahead of time, you've got to work something out. But what happens if you refuse? Oh, I imagine they probably take you in a separate room and, you know, try to scare you and tell you, have you, you have no rights and intimidate you. Because like you said, you're, you're dealing with the police officer who pulls you over, right? In what jurisdiction would you be in when you have this situation? Well, States? it's at a border. It's at a border coming back yeah. into the United States. So you're at a federal airport. So you're on federal territory. And uh, it's basically border entry. So, so you, you know, you have to the States. That's right. So once you when you're coming back from, say, you know, like Amsterdam or Europe or, you know, England back into the States. Okay. So everything that I just spoke about applies here. So they have that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, so it's all the United States. So who who is an agency of the United States? So it is the United States, and then it's the TSA, 
yep. and then whoever else, and then whoever, whatever company is doing this. Yeah. And if you could give me that information, like the company stuff, I'll go do some research and I'll help you with the security agreement. And I would even set up a correspondence with them and ask them, you know, all these questions, you know, about your data retention policy and this sort of thing and ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, I'd like yeah. to I'd like to front run all of it before yeah. before I do it to put them on notice essentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. I I wanna I wanna do that because it's a, certainly a, a humiliating experience. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate your comments, Hila. I know. I imagine that in Israel, like you're saying, that you don't have a choice. They're using biometrics already. That, that's the way it is. And you know, by the way, I mean, your photo is, is is biometric data. That's right. I mean, when the cop pulls you over, he makes the, he looks to see if that's you're the guy. That's biometric data. They've been doing this for decades. We just don't realize it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay. And if someone, if some, okay, if you if you sued somebody and, and there's a there's a default situation, what what you can do is okay. The other party can always uh, uh, answer late, but you can you can um, you should apply to the clerk for an entry of default. So the clerk just looks at the docket and says, okay. It was served on this date. Here's the return of service. And there's been no answer docketed yet. So therefore, I'm going to say as the clerk that he's late. Then once you get the entry of default, you file a motion for default judgment, which requires a hearing. Then notices must a notice must be served to the party through the registered agent, however you served it. And then you, you give them a second chance, basically. So if they wanted to, reasonably within about a 30-day period, even after they're late for 30 days, they could file a response and ask the court for permission to file late if they give a decent reason. So, but yeah, I agree with you. I would ask the clerk for an entry of default. That's what you do first. Yeah, they're using your image. They're gonna take, they're gonna try to take our biometric data. So this is what I'm saying. If you have this security agreement in place, you're like a covered, you're, you're protected. They collect this data. Now they just dump down a huge liability and they gave you a heck of a cause of action against them. I'm not sure exactly how that plays out yet, but this is gonna be a battle. But look at this. I mean, if you, if you look at my uh, share screen here, so the current value of a person's data who's given up his age, gender, all this stuff, it goes away. Watch. Shit. It's a lot less if I take away his age. Yeah. I don't know where they're getting this from, but oh, no. uh, let's, let's have this. In. Are you a millionaire? Yes. Okay. So, all right. So maybe there no. the is a millionaire. Jumped. His data is worth what? Three times more? Something like that? Two times more? Hundred times more. Let's say if you're an accountant. Okay, you're more valuable as an accountant than oh, you're more valuable as a chairman. How about a, an attorney? Ooh, why do they get to be more valuable? Let's see here. How about a company owner? Ooh, that's better than an attorney. Entrepreneur. Ooh, that's even better. Are you married? Okay, that's a heck of a lot more. Interesting. I think that's why the IRS gets people to sign jointly. They give you deductions. Hmm. Don't you get more to write off or something if you name your kids as deductions and like in data? All right. So it goes, it goes deeper. We can do, go next and all that. So you guys see this, right? IG.ft.com. So check that out. If you want to ask, don't ask me, ask the world <laughs> what your data might be worth. I would just say it's going to be worth a lot. It's going to be worth a lot for money, and it's going to be worth a lot for control. That's my answer. So, I hey. think we can get around without the documents. This is the thing. I mean, I think they do want to. They do want to block it, our access to resources and travel unless we submit to this new world order system. Maybe I'm naive. I think we can get around it. I think we can do that. Have to try. At least we have to try. If we don't, then we should get what we deserve, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, but that's all I want to show you all tonight. Does anybody want to ask me anything? You can ask something off, off subject. Immigration law, I I can I know how to go know stuff, but I don't know immigration law. I have a vague idea of things, but I'm not the person you want to talk to. Probably it's going to be an immigration attorney. In fact, I've hired an immigration attorney for my wife years ago. I don't want to deal with that. I'm, I'm more about administrative. If you've got an administrative issue with immigration, like we had one um, while back, a gentleman was from Russia and he was uh, he was uh, wanting to renew his visa 
and the US wouldn't do it because of the fake pandemic nonsense. So um, there was a provision on one of the application on the on the documents where you have to give the United States a reason why you should not be have your visa renewed. And it was on block 40. So on block 40, it was an open-ended response. And so I wrote a response. And my response was to accuse the United States of genocide, that there is no pandemic, and to stop doing this as a condition for renewing my visa. All other things being equal, I should have my, my visa renewed. And they renewed it. They didn't even argue or anything. They didn't respond. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't know what else to do in that case because, I mean, I cited the Nuremberg Code because th- that applied because it's an international treaty. And I accused the United States of violating an international treaty and genocide. And they just renewed his visa without argument. I don't know, maybe the guy who read it says, oh, crap, we're not going to talk about this. (laughs) (laughs) All right, anything interesting? If not, great. I'm going to go end this. And uh, hey, tomorrow's the uh, bike ride that I mentioned to you guys a couple of weeks ago here in Orlando. Our last Friday. Is that the the bike ride of the people who are fighting uh, the hippity hop? Skippity doodah. I don't know what that is. I just That's know that for we're, abused we're, children. No, no, we're not doing that. No. It's oh. just it's called critical mass. It's like twelve hundred crazy people that ride their bikes in the downtown Friday night, take up all those streets. Oh, that's cool. Can't go anywhere. All right. Yeah. Hey, Marcia. Let me know. Um, we could we could talk about some things. That's an interesting subject. Please uh please uh set up a, a time or just shoot me a text if you guys want to set up a time. But it's so much easier if you go to aceofcoins.com and just schedule something. Most people have a coupon code by now. So, and hey, straight, do you have a question? Hey, yeah, I did just, I, I just want to kind of uh, verify. So where, where are we with the biometric data? That's just, we need to set something up with you, pay for it, but you've got it all figured out and whatnot. Yeah, if you would just tell me who you want the data to be, I'll do the research, find out. If it's Google, I already got the research done. Uh, so what, what about like, it. what about like stores? I went into Marshalls and I'm like, geez, they've got cameras all over the place. And I'm sure that... Yeah. That is a collection of your biometric data anytime you have video surveillance. So certainly let's go after them. Let's just name the store. I do a little research to find out who the general counsel is. I find out who the exact legal name is. I go to Bloomberg and all these things. Okay. And then get your name, exact legal name, and then your address. And then we just go from there. There's a couple other things. And then like I was talking about this evening, uh, how do we figure out what kind of value? So right. I would just say this. We're not going to go wrong trying to get a good idea of what the value of the data is. Just try to do your best to get the value. We can't go wrong though. Okay. Yeah, let's let's end Marshalls. Yeah, that and Target and all these creatures. I think they want it. I think they want us to implode their retail operations because I think they want to operate through distribution centers through drones. Yeah. I think that's what they want to do. They yeah. All right. We'll see. That's awful. All right, y'all. Well, thanks so much. Oh, Thank one you. quick question. Okay. What 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 about doing um that for like the city of New York, which has cameras all over the place? Or is Please that what, was that a yes? Please do, yeah, name them. Yes. Okay. All right. Please I, do. I, I have to get the money together to get the form to you, but I will okay. do that. Yeah, yeah, no problem. All right. Okay. So Jay. Yeah. So I mean the whole point of this is is to I mean, there's they're trying to interfere with your ability to travel and they're wanting to shrink it. They're start, they they want to stop us from doing international, but then they want to shrink it down and do it more regional, like 15 minute cities. So yeah. the whole, the hope of the security agreement is that for instance, you know, you serve TSA, then it limits their ability to even maybe request a passport because that's your biometric data. So I, I, I don't, I don't know about the actual identifying yourself but what i'm what i'm having us do is control the data you're still going to use a passport and things of that nature as far as i can tell yeah i don't have a problem with that i'm just saying we should control the data sure they're gonna they're not gonna like the fact that we have the right to control the data they don't and it's gonna cost them money right if we can say like if we can basically file a, I mean, we would file a case against them and we would bring pleadings against them. We can make a case in a court. We can set up a case in an arbitration forum. There's many things we, there's many things we could do. I'm not sure exactly yet, but I know we can perfect a security interest in this data that they're collecting. I know that much. And I know it's, it's, it's not gonna be ignored. I know that. But as far yeah. as traveling and having access to resources, I mean, 
we're the ones that invented the technology. So basically what we need to do is create the technology and just go use it and ignore them. I'm talking about traveling outside of the borders, traveling yeah. outside of customs. It can ignore them. Just show up on shore, show up at an airport, show up at a landing strip. What are they going to have to do then? Call yeah. the military? Yeah. Yeah? Bring it. You can't limit people's, you can't deny them the right to travel. You can make it difficult for them, but it's not going to fly. Certainly. Cool. All right, guys. Um, so much. we have yeah. the right to travel and that, you know, if we're flying in the next couple months, is there something we should do prior to set up like, no, I'm not going to go along with these certain statutory procedures and stuff? Or that would be you just too drawn out. need to, to travel. I don't know yet, but what I would suggest is that you identify who's collecting your data and put a put a security agreement naming that party as a debtor. At least do that much prior to flying. Prior just, to the actual. Yeah, yeah. Don't be a, a martyr. I mean, go travel. Look, we'll get the last word. Okay. <laughs> All okay. Right. Remember, we're the parrots. We're the ones that created this system, right? They can they can joke around all they want, but in the end. We get to say what the bedtime is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, yeah. And we can actually, yeah. um, you know, if you want to stay, we can um, we can talk back and forth about doing the research for finding which defense contractors operating, you know, with TSA at at border crossings. If you want, we can do that in the uh, the, the Ace of Coins discussion group. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That's what it's for. Sounds good. All right, guys, you have a nice weekend. Thank you. You too. Thank you.